Hi everybody, we're going to do our first Bible bit on 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Let's jump into it. I'm looking at my computer screen now. I'm open in my Logos Bible software. I have my uh, Revised Common Lectionary open here in one window and all my links. We're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians 6, 1 to 13. I have it open already over here in this window and we'll look here. Uh, I'm using the New Revised Standard Version because of its close adherence to the Greek text. So let's just take a look at verse 1. So Paul says, As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. Now I want to stop right there because when I was reading this this morning, I had my coffee out and I was reading this in the Greek text on my iPad, and I just couldn't help but notice a couple of features of this text. Number one, this first word here in the Greek text, Sun uh, erguntes, which means working together. Uh, now we have that here, as we work together with him. This is the present participle, so it's as we work or while we work. There is a sense of camaraderie here. There's a sense of partnership, but it just struck me as Paul is saying to the Corinthian church that they are working together. But it doesn't actually have the words with him in here. If I highlight that, it says Greek, as we work together. And uh, that's an important thing to see because they've said, as we work together with him, they've added this phrase with him to try to give it a sense of meaning. They're working together with God. But this could also be interpreted as we work together with the Corinthians. In other words, Paul is highlighting the partnership that he and his uh, co-workers have with the Corinthian church, be being their apostle and their missionary in the world. Then he says, also, we urge you, a very strong word. This word, parakaleo, is used quite often by Paul to exhort or to encourage or to challenge. It has various translations, but uh, this idea is he's urging them not to accept the grace of God in vain. As you read this in the Greek text, you can see my mouse down here, it says not, may, and then it says eis kanon, into emptiness. The Greek preposition eis, into, the idea is that there's movement here. And so what Paul is saying, he's urging them not to move into a place of emptiness uh, with respect to the charis, the karen here, uh, accusative case, but it's tain karen to teu, uh, the grace of God, to empty out the grace of God. I mean, that's quite a thing, not to move into a place where you've emptied out the grace of God. That's quite a statement in itself. So my thought immediately as I was reading the Greek text this morning was, how do we empty out the grace of God? What does Paul have in mind when he's thinking about that? And clearly in the book of Galatians, that would mean that they had adhered to the law and they were emptying the grace of its effective uses for salvation. You know, Paul says, what you began in the spirit, now you're going to finish in the flesh. You know, he's asking this question. In the Galatian context, I think it would be used in that gospel sense. But here with the Corinthian church, it seems to be more connected to this interaction between one's life, what one believes, and then how one lives one's life. So we have the Corinthian church emptying the grace of God of its, of its power, of its impact, of, it, of its purpose, of its meaning in their lives. Uh, they were saved by grace through faith. They were saved uh, in order to be empowered to love God and to love their neighbor. We've been all year looking at that idea. And because of the attitudes and the lack of faith of the Corinthian people, they are in danger of emptying out the grace of God in terms of its effectiveness in their lives. Paul is encouraging them not to do that and to just simply for us to reflect for a moment in prayer in our own personal spaces as are we in danger in some places in our lives of emptying the grace of God, of its effectiveness, of its power, of its life-changing potential in our lives because we're not fully embracing the gospel of Jesus Christ. 